Kritoa is a story based on real life events. It's a local story about a young girl who was removed from her Khoi tribe and had to work for Jan van Riebeck. It tells a story of two clashing cultures and how she finds her way. It's done so well internationally and finally tonight South African audiences have a chance to see it. So let's go chat to the cast. In South Africa's history, women aren't necessarily seen or acknowledged uh, for the people that they were back then. So choosing the story, why hers specifically? Well, you know, I was tasked to do a docu-feature about a hidden history in our country. So a history that not many people, or some historical fact that not many people knew about. So I really wanted to come up with um, something compelling and I was sitting in a church service on a Sunday and uh, the pastor was saying, you know, the reason why colored people struggle with their identity and struggle with alcoholism and those kinds of things is because of this ancestor called Kratoa and I was like, what is this guy saying? And so because I normally don't just take what people throw at me, I actually started to do research. I went into about two or three years of research just into this topic. I started interviewing all of the top historians on the subject matters, Yvette Abrams, Vatrice Malherbe, Yati Bjerdenkamp, all of those people who had written theses about her. And gone back into what was our history books when I was in in grade um, three or four back in the 90s, um, there was like two or three lines written about her that said that she was the domestic servant in Jan van Riebeek's house. But subsequent to that, I found out that she was, as a young child, brought into his house. She started out looking after the children of the BOC company, and then Maria van Riebeek started to teach her languages because she saw that she was bright. So by the time she was 15, 16 years old, she was speaking seven different languages, you know? And, and Jan van Riebeek had engaged with her uncle, who a lot of people know as Heri de Strandloper, and um, he was starting to realize that Harry wasn't always interpreting things the way that he wanted to be told. And that's when Kratoa, at the age of 16, became his chief interpreter. So here is a woman who was negotiating between the different Khoi tribes and the, the VOC company at the time, and she wasn't acknowledged for it. She was, she, there's a blurb about it as a domestic servant. So there was so much that I felt warranted for it to be a feature film, and that is sort of where that stemmed from. Ek het ook nodig. Nie net iemand wat beide tale kan praat, maar iemand wat beide groepe van binnen afkeer. Now you play the role of Jan van Riebeek, quite a historical character in South Africa. Where did you even start? Yo, uh, so once I got over all my fear, <laughs> um, I started with um, the only real documentation or, or published work that exists about, well, of him, is um, he kept a diary for the VOC. But it's, it's, it's a very formal, very um, impersonal kind of document. It's Quite about factual. very factual. It's about the day, day to day businesses of the, the fort. Um, so, I mean, he didn't even write most of it. So, yeah, so I just researched as much as I could. But then I came across a very small, insignificant, seemingly insignificant book called Jaffa uh, Ribek, a character sketch. A character sketch. Um, that was written by Sir Louis Leipold in the 20s. And I randomly stumbled upon it um, at a second-hand bookstore, and that became like my little Bible because that had a um, lot of as uh, historical assumptions um, and character uh, sketches of him. So he grew up in this kind of household, therefore we can deduce that he is this kind of he was this kind of boy. Um, and then I kind of used that to create a character that we actually don't really know much about as a person. Uh, and then took it from there. And, and I had to remind myself that we're not busy with a documentary, we're busy with a film. Yeah, yeah. So I do have a bit of creative license to, yeah, to indulge and embellish and... Ernest, you play the lead character's sweetheart boyfriend, right? That's Tell cool. us more about that and the relationship between you two. You hit it right on the nose. Um, very interesting. They were promised to each other since the age of nine. Um, so it was a very deep relationship. And then when she needs to leave the camp, of course, he's heartbroken. Twice his heart gets shattered. The fact that his love is taken away. So she's taken away before what they call a four months fierce which is when you ladies become young women. Okay. 
And of course, in that, between that period of time, Kratoa was also hiding the fact that she was now raped be before she was, be you know, yeah. um, going through this phase in her life. So it's all at elements, but, you know, so she's keeping it away from him. He doesn't know. Then she needs to go again. All of that elements. And you see Doman, even though he's a very strong character, very strong because he's this alpha male, um, he's a leader of his camp, all of these things, he starts to shatter. Slowly you see his character starting to shatter through the movie. And so you see this evolve and how his heart gets broken. And How did you envision these characters? Were you part of the casting process for this feature film? Yes, I was. And, you know, I think, you know, there were so few facts written about her. It was mostly historians having their opinions about what they think could have happened to her. So what we basically had about her what is what was written by Jan van Riebeek. Her story is written from the POV of a man and his scribe who was male. That's all we knew about her. So basically, when writing the story, we had to take the few facts that we had, and then we had to marry it with what we felt would her emotional response be. Fortunately for me, myself, Margaret, who wrote the film as well with me, and Roberto directed it, most of the HODs actually on the project were women. So when we wrote the story, we said to ourselves, what would my emotional response be in this? How would I feel if I was in this situation? And then texture and color in those historical facts were those emotional responses, and in that way we had her people because we wanted it to be completely her journey and out of her perspective. Being on set, I mean, wow. just watching the trailer, we saw how, you know, wow. it really takes you back wow. to those real life events back in the day. Wow, that's what I gotta say, wow, to Roberta Durant, awesome work, you know, and the prop guys, they really went in depth, you know, we shot in Cape Gullis, so it, it had the same feel. You know, the weather, the clouds, everything, you know, and the little mountain in the back, and then they had to edit the mountain. I don't want to give it much away, but beautiful. This is a film about a girl who's torn apart by those she's willing and wanting to bring together. Tonight, we saw the movie, and we think it's absolutely amazing. So, South Africans, you better go out and check it.